So in the last video, we did a four flute end mill that was made out of glass. Now that was an epic fail, but if we choose a material that's three times tougher than ceramic, maybe it has a fighting chance. So stick around to the end of the video because if this works like we think it's gonna work, we're gonna go ahead and give it to Barry to see if it'll cut. We're gonna try it in wood, plastic, and if we're feeling froggy, we're gonna try aluminum. So if we change from a four flute end mill to a six flute end mill, that should give us a stouter tool to use in our milling machine. So the next thing we gotta do is we gotta prep our material and load it into our Walter Helectronic Power 400 and we're gonna grind a jade end mill. So what is jade? Jade's gonna be a natural mineral or a rock and since it's a natural mineral, it's gonna have a Mohs hardness scale between six and seven. Back in the day, jade was used to make tools and knives, but now in modern use, it's more for ornamental jewelry. If this actually works, we're gonna give it to Barry to test to see what he can destroy. First wheel we're gonna be using is gonna be on spindle two. We're gonna be using a Tearless StarTech XPP Plus wheel, and it's gonna be a 1A1. We're gonna go ahead and step up to our core panel and I hit classic mode. That's gonna bring me to my program. The first operation we're gonna do after probing is gonna be a fluting operation. So the fluting operation is gonna be done with a Tearless StarTech XPP Plus wheel. And what's gonna be different from this compared to our glass end mills, we're gonna produce six flutes. So what's gonna happen is that 1A1 wheel is gonna come down and it's gonna grind six flutes into our piece of jade. So what I'm gonna do now on this piece of jade is I'm gonna create a K land on the outside diameter of the cutting edge. So for this, I'm gonna use a Tearlit StarTech XPP Plus wheel, the same wheel that we use to flute it, and I'm gonna go back in there and I'm gonna produce a K land. My flutes are gonna be designated by purple. Now if I come down here to K land and actually rotate this tool around, I have a light blue surface for my K land on my OD. So what I believe the K-LAN is gonna do is on this piece of J, since it's a stone, it's prone to cracking once we flute it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a K-LAN on the outside diameter and that's gonna give me a polished edge for a cutting edge. So if I come here, I can see that I made my K-LAN just on the outer edge. That way along that cutting edge surface, it might not be chipped. Cause I have to remember that I'm working with a piece of stone. I'm not working with a piece of carbide. I wanna polish up my edges, that way I don't have any chipped edges and I can really give this end mill a fighting chance of actually cutting some real material. The next operation we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna create a gash. We're gonna be using a gashing wheel, which is gonna be a Tearlit StarTech HP wheel at 45 degrees with a five thou radius. What this wheel is gonna do is it's gonna create a gashing profile on the end face of our piece of jade. That way we have proper chip evacuation. So on my simulation, I highlighted my gashing operation to be described as a color orange. So on my simulation right here, the gashing profile is gonna be all orange and all six cutting edges. Now, I wanted to show you this because what I'm about to show you next is gonna be our notch. Our notch is gonna play a very important role in the end face clearances because we have a six flute end mill that we're trying to create. Four flutes are normally pretty easy, but once you move into more flutes, you have to have enough clearances or you'll start having steps. Notches are a great way to get rid of that. So we're gonna be using the same wheel for our gashing as we are our notch. We're gonna be using a Tearlit StarTech HP wheel at 45 degrees. What this notch is gonna do is it's gonna take out excess material, that way we don't have any overlapping ratios and create steps on our end face. So when you make an end mill, you can't just flute it and expect the side cutting force. You have to have clearance angles. This is where OD primary and secondary clearance angles come into play. Now you can have more than just two clearance angles, you can have as many as you want, but for this application, we're just gonna do two. That's gonna be the pretty much a standard operation for most end mills. With my StarTech XPP DS wheel, which is gonna be an 11V9 cup wheel, known for its retaining edge, we're gonna go ahead and do the OD primary and secondary clearances, which are gonna be labeled as purple and green on my end mill. What this purple and green line is gonna represent is gonna give the end mill the ability to create and form a chip, and that way we can have proper chip evacuation and have good side cutting force. So that's looking pretty good. The last operations we need to do are in-phase clearances. We need to create a primary and secondary in-phase clearances, and for that, we're gonna be using a Sterilit StarTech XPP DS wheel, which is gonna be an 11V9, and it's gonna be the same wheel we use for clearances on our outside diameter. So once we've established the primary and secondary in-phase clearances highlighted by yellow and light blue on our in-phase of our piece of jade, we now completed the world's first end mill made out of jade. I'm really liking how this is turning out. If you want to leave a comment and let me know what you think, if it's going to actually work, make sure you go ahead and do that now. And go ahead and like and subscribe and follow for more content. What makes this jade different than our glass end mill is we did six flutes, which give us a bigger core diameter so it has a fighting chance. We also introduced the K-Land to refine the cutting edge. And since it's a six flute, 
we ground a notch in it. Now the notch is important because we ground six flutes and we have more cutting edges, so we have to make sure we have enough clearances. So the last thing we have to do is we have to see if it's actually berry proof. So let's go over to the BVM and give it to Barry and see if it holds up. Oh, Barry! What? I got you something. What is this? I only made one. Well, RIP. I'm glad that you bring me things to destroy. Oh yeah, you're the, just the guy for it, buddy. I sure am. One broken end mill coming up. Are you proud of yourself? You made I, it through wood? I actually am. I'm pretty proud. Congratulations. You made a thousand dollar jigsaw. Let's just go ahead and step it up for the people. Give the people what they want. Yeah. Chips of greatness or exploding tools of greatness, whatever. All right, Chris, let's see what you let's, got. Let's see it. You're the fighting chance, Barry. Trying. Well, congratulations, Chris. You're not completely worthless. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you want to try it in aluminum? Let's do it, brother. Okie dokie. Now the real test. It's my favorite time of the day. Time to break stuff. Take Chris's masterpiece and destroy. <laughs> Come on, man. Give it a fighting chance. Here we go. Our survey says. Oh man, it made it a little bit though. It made it a little bit. I'll take it. Well, Chris, we find ourselves in the same place as last time. Your We're masterpiece destroyed and me smiling. There you go. Clean up the corpse of your tool. Dude, it went further though. It went further than I thought it was. Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, there's no cutting edge left on there. But look, look at that. From the inside, that's what that J looks like on the inside. Ground, baby. I knew I should have gave it to Jesse though. He wouldn't have broke it. So that was a great experiment. And even though it's not 100% berry proof, we actually learned a lot along the way. So let's talk about some of the tool geometry that helped us in creating a one-of-a-kind jade end mill that was able to cut wood and plastic and almost aluminum. So what we did is we created a six flute jade end mill rather than a four flute glass end mill. Then we put a K-Lan on the outside cutting diameter and since it's a six flute, we actually created a notch so that way it helps with clearance. So all of this together created a successful end mill. Now this is going right up on CNC Expert. If you like what we're doing, make sure you ring that notification bell, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.